Hello, everyone. This is Tom Hutchins with Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions. It's uh, the top of the hour. Uh, I see a lot of people getting signed in and logged in, so we're going to give it about 30 seconds uh, before we get started. Uh, but thanks very much for joining us. All right, still see a few more people jumping on, so uh, we'll give it another 30 seconds. It's at not even one o'clock Eastern yet, so we came on a few minutes early. As you can see, we've got a big panel uh, to share a lot of good insight with you today. So uh, excited uh, for today's webinar and glad you could join us. All right, still a lot of people getting logged in. So, uh, Carlos, it looks like you have the prettiest sky in the background. Uh, don't have to ask you what the weather is in Miami. Looks pretty sunny nice. And sunny and beautiful. Year round, correct? Sir, sure. come on down. Anybody want to move down here? We got plenty of space and plenty of non-QM loans. So, <laughs> we're ready. Eric, Bob, you guys, not you, Flanagan, you're good. Chris Taylor, how are things in Denver? All right, we need to work on your vault, your sound. That didn't oh, come sorry. through. We, uh, we have a lot of <laughs> rain recently, so we need it. We need water. <laughs> Water's good. Yes. All right, well, uh, let's see. It's a minute after one. <clears throat> let's go ahead and get started. So, uh, Again, my name is Tom Hutchins with Angel Oak Mortgage Solutions, and we're really thrilled about today's webinar. Um, we were just we were having a conversation about uh, you know sharing important information uh, that originators need in order to close non-QM loans and to to really kind of keep growing their business in 2021. And as we were having those discussions, we just thought you know we we have a lot of experienced people. Uh, account executives with Angel Oak. We have over 80 account executives right now uh, across the country, uh, but what you have today are the top producers. These are uh, our 10 biggest producers. I think you might have seen it on the invitation, but just, just since 2019, this group that you see on the screen has originated over 2 billion in non-QM loans. So tons of experience, uh, and I just, we, we thought it'd be a great idea for us to kind of pick everybody's brain on how to use non-QM and utilize non-QM in your business. Uh, another kind of important fact is that the average tenure of just this group with Angel Oak is over five years. So if whether or not you know it, Angel Oak has been at this for about eight years, you know, focused on the non-QM business. Uh, we are a vertically integrated company. We're going to talk more about that today, but there's just a lot of things that make Angel Oak unique. Certainly 
the account executives on our team are probably the, the first and foremost uh, difference maker and and you've got the top group uh, from Angel Oak. So uh, with that, just gonna kind of jump into it. I, I One of the things that I really like to do on these is to get an idea of, of the attendees. And so we're gonna pop up a quick poll um, and just, if you would, when it pops up, if you'd answer the poll question, that would be great. Uh, really just wanna know how many of you have closed a non-QM loan in the last 12 months? So how many of you have closed a non-QM loan in the last 12 months? Shouldn't take you long to answer. If you don't mind, just clicking on that. That would be awesome. All right, looks like the poll is rolling. Okay, the results are coming in. I might have to get them manually because they, uh, here we go. Sorry, okay, so it looks like two thirds, 66% uh, have not closed a, an IQM loan and a 34, about a third have. So that's a great audience. We've got some experience and we've got quite a few uh, perhaps inexperienced. So again, thanks for joining us. Uh, we are recording this, so you. You can take notes if you like, but we'll send it out to you uh, after the fact. Uh, there is a questions section. If you have a question, please put it in there. Uh, if we have time, we're gonna be very respectful. We, we reserved an hour, so we're gonna try to get through this all in an hour. I would love to go around the room and introduce each account executive, but that might take uh, the first half hour. Up. So we're not gonna do that today. We're just going to kind of jump into it. We, we basically have some questions that we thought were really good questions to help you understand uh, the non-QM space and, and more about Angel Oak. So I'm just going to kick it off and then turn it over to a couple people. First up is Steve Arnold and, and Carlos Betancourt. Um, first question, how do, how do you get more business from realtors and other referral partners? So Steve and Carlos, if you guys want to take off with that, that'd be great. Certainly, Carlos, I'll, I'll, I'll start on that one. And thanks everybody for your time. Uh, my personal opinion is most of the comp competition out there for, for your fellow loan officers are going after the, the obvious, the realtors and the, and the home builders. So from experience, I like to suggest, and this really works, is go after, you know, think a little bit outside the box, go after the other, other resources and referrals and partners, uh, such as, CPAs and accounting firms, uh, financial planners, financial advisors, uh, tax preparers. Uh, they all work with self-employed borrowers, and that is, uh, that'll lead you to, to a lot of the self-employed uh, borrowers, which is one of our, our biggest niche programs, which we'll talk about later, but also divorce attorneys. Uh, a lot of folks have to, have to, uh, uh, have to refi their home, and uh, what better way than to target divorce attorneys? Uh, bankruptcy attorneys. Uh, I would I would market my my services towards the divorce attorneys as well. Uh, corporate filing attorneys that handle new entity formations. Uh, so there's there's a whole lot of, of of referral sources and partners you could be marketing your your services to other than just the the retail uh, you know other than just the builders and, and the realtors. But also I like to suggest volunteering to do some open houses with your local realtors and have a a uh, pre-approval or, or a mortgage LO desk inside of the uh, of, of the home that's being you know, for an open house. You'll definitely attract some business that way as well. So don't just limit yourself, differentiate yourself from from the other uh, you know your other uh, LOs out there. Carlos, anything you want to add? Yes, Eva, I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. I think it's just thinking outside the box. You know, a lot of times we get a little comfortable with in our business with just the same referral sources that. We uh, that we have. So I always recommend to all my all my partners, you got to continuously prospect and prospect because you may have a referral source that may leave the business. They may, um, you know, may be happy with uh, whoever they're working with. So whatever reason, they're just you know not producing as much with you anymore as as you know as they you used to in the past. So I think it's it's a constant uh, 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 sourcing of new of new people. 
uh, putting yourself out there and talking about something other than the standard FHA conventional, start talking about something that you can do uh, to those re referral partners that brings value to them. I think if, if you differentiate, differentiate yourself on what you bring to the table, uh, you're going to be successful. So, Yeah, that's awesome. You know, uh, Steve, you mentioned kind of just CPAs, the number one product. And like you said, we'll talk more about it is that bank statement loan. But CPAs are the reason that a lot of borrowers, self-employed borrowers can't qualify for an agency loan using their tax returns. So if CPAs who are creating these tax returns had outlets for their, their customers, they would certainly be a, be a great referral source. And another piece that I think uh, I've heard a lot of stories of success are other loan officers. You know, you, you probably have a network of loan officers. Perhaps they work for a big bank. They're an LO over at Wells Fargo or Bank of America. Those, those big, larger entities, they're never going to do non-QM. So, you know, network with them and, and ask them to turn over their self-employed borrowers. You're not trying to take the referral sources. You're just going to help that borrower uh, get into the home or, or, or do the transaction that, that they're trying to get done. So uh, I think those, those are pretty good sources as well. Anything else? All right, All right this next one is for Eric Morganson and Jill Polchi. Just a quick question. What do you say to someone who says non-QM is too hard or they're just not supportive of doing a non-QM loan? Well, I'll take that first, Jill. Uh, Eric Morganson here again. Thank you all for your time. I think that screams opportunity. There's less than 15% of licensed loan officers in America have done a non-QM loan. So that tells you that literally you don't have much competition. Now, literally, Angel Oak has been at this for eight years. And eight years ago, these were wonky. Yep, these bank sample loans were kind of hard to do where you had to get a CPA to draft a PL. That was hard to do. And yeah, they were hard eight years ago. But boy, oh boy, have we ever streamlined bank statement loans. And what is there, about 45 million self-employed Americans out there that are taking advantage of one of our 70,000 page tax code. Folks out there that are looking to do these loans, look, you don't have much competition because everybody thinks they're too hard when they're not. Jill? Yeah, sure. So the, the other reason why they're not difficult is usually because by the time the loan comes to us, we're aware of any challenges, whether it's credit, debt to income or whatnot. We have a pre-qual process where we, your AE really does a thorough scrub of the borrower profile, the credit history, making sure it meets all the program criteria, and on a bank statement loan, we even calculate your income for you. So you know right away what the borrower's purchasing power is going to be, what their max loan amount can go to. And you might surprise yourself. There might be a lot more income there than you initially were hoping for. And your borrower might be able to get even a more a higher loan amount <clears throat> than you initially wanted. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this process takes about 24 to 48 hours. And your, our prequal shows all of your qualifying criteria, all your pricing options by the broker shop. And it just makes the whole process a lot smoother because you know all the challenges up front and where you stand. And, and with that, you guys, bank statement rates about, you know, five years ago were in the sevens and eights. Today, Angelo comes out with a bank statement loan, 30 year fixed at three and a rate starting at three and a quarter. So for those out there that thought, oh my gosh, I can't sell a bank statement rate. Folks, these rates, are, this is some cheap money. Yep, and a lot of that has to do with just you mentioned eight years ago, Eric, and how it was it was a different game. But a lot of that has to do with these loans are good loans. Last year was a bit of a stress test uh, due to COVID nineteen, and these bank statement loans and non QM loans in general performed and performed very well. So that is what's keeping that spread from agency to be quite low, and in some cases lower than agency rates. So good stuff. No need, no need to shy away from non-QM because they're not too hard. You talked specifically about bank statements, but even full doc loans. Full doc loans are, are very, you know, you have to get income, income statements, you have to get asset statements, just like you would on any full doc loan, even if it's an agency loan. So it's not very, it's not different at all. The difference is really what Jill talked about, the AE involvement on the front end. But that's, I mean, that's that's where you guys 
really come in and make a difference because you address any challenges that that might come up that that people wouldn't be expecting. So uh, expertise, experience, and all that certainly matters and, and, and makes a big difference. Okay, Gigi, next next question's up for you. Uh, yes. How do we help support brokers and originators? So how we do that is we've got local AEs that offer in-person training. Obviously, with what's gone on in the last year, there hasn't been as much in-person training, but we're going to be getting back to that very shortly. So you've got local people that will come to your office and train you in person. Our online training tools and videos will walk you through every step of the loan process. Um, we have a chat option on our website, which will give you access to a live person to help you if needed. Um, our marketing tools, which are awesome, which will include flyers, media posts, and a PowerPoint presentation that you can customize and use yourself. Um, as Jill said, we going back to the bank statement program, we calculate that for you at the prequal stage, so we're guaranteeing you what your uh, borrower's buying power is. You've got experienced AEs that are going to help you through every step of the prequal, so you know that the loan is going to close. Um, our pricing engine is extremely easy to use. You don't need a login. You'll be able to get pricing without contacting any of us. But of course, we're here for any questions that you have. Our matrix is extremely detailed to where you know exactly the criteria for the program and if your borrower is qualified. Yeah, and I wouldn't, uh, that, that's awesome, Gigi. I wouldn't shortchange just the, the quality of prequals that we issue. You know, that's that's kind of our, that's our stamp of approval. Um, all of our AEs are given lots of resources. Our, if there are questions about a loan at the prequal stage, you mentioned, we've already mentioned the income on a bank statement calculator comes through. Uh, and that's, you know, we kind of like to say that you can take take that to the bank. I mean, that's 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 what we're going to use, and and it helps the process be uh, very very smooth from start to finish. So we can get those closed really quickly, and and some of these things we'll maybe show on our website later if we have some time. So th thanks for that, Gigi. All right, Chris uh, Chris Taylor and Scott Grubel, uh, why should an LO get into non-QM, and do you have any tips for an LO to grow their business? Uh, I would say it's a great time to get into non-QM because really it's it's a business that is not as rate sensitive. It's more about the loan product itself, um, and and it's a product that will always be here. Borrowers need uh, to take cash out, for example, uh, on their houses, and they want to buy investment properties. And we have criteria that's a little bit more forgiving. Um, and not as strict. So it's a, it's a loan product that will always be here. I, w I really want to talk about too, the, the self-employed borrower is really the type of borrower that's going to probably spend more money, take more risk, and also be a return customer. I find that most of my loan officers will say that have been with me for a long time that have borrowers that come back to them that want to buy an investment property or a second home. Once they realize that they can be approved, um, it's amazing. And if you take a look at a self-employed borrower, the average loan size is larger, there's more money to be made, and they're more grateful for the loan. So, Yeah, if I, and if I could add to that, I, I think it's interesting because that poll showed that we have a pretty decent sized audience of people here that have not closed a non-QM loan. So um, I really think loan officers should get into non-QM. I mean, first and foremost, the most basic reason is it's going to help you close more loans and therefore increase your income. You're going to make more money. Um, but more than anything else is it really adds value to your business um, to be able to have a more diversified product offering to your referral partners. The last thing uh, any loan officer, I'm assuming, ever wants to do is be in a position where they say, we can't or we don't offer this loan program. Um, by offering non-QM, you're setting yourself up to be that one-stop shop increasing your value to your referral partners and you know we're, we're picking up kind of right where we left off pre-pandemic where the non-qm sector is the fastest growing sector in the mortgage industry today um, the public awareness consumer awareness of these products and, and programs are at an all-time high so so they're out there consumers are aware of them um, we see consumers knocking on the doors asking more about them 
So for a loan officer out there, I think it's vital to have this in your tool belt to be able to offer to your referral sources and, and your borrowers. Yeah, I think, uh, Scott, I love the word dif differentiate yourselves. I mean, that's, that, that's, a, that's a big piece of it. Um, you know, we talk all the time with, with our customers that, you know, everybody can do that Fannie Mae loan, that agency rate and term refi, but who's going to be able to do that, that jumbo bank statement self-employed borrower who's, who's been turned down, maybe some other lenders and is maybe a little frustrated, but, you know, you're really providing a solution to that potential home buyer. And uh, certainly then you become a hero for, uh, for the realtor and everybody involved in the transaction. So. Good stuff. All right, thank you both. Um, all right, Stacy Flanagan and Chris Ferrugio, this one's for you. What would you say to an LO who is looking to do a non-QM loan and maybe even their first non-QM loan? Stacy, I think you're on mute. <laughs> that help? That does. <laughs> I would say, um, don't be nervous. Don't be scared of them. A lot of people think they're gonna be hard because they're the unknown to them. They're not hard at all. They're such an easy loan to do. And as you've heard from all the AEs so far, we're here to help you. Lean on us, that, use our expertise. We know how to get the loans done. We know how to get them to closing. If we didn't, we wouldn't be on this panel. So lean on us to help you get these loans closed especially if it's your first time don't flutter around and, and be a fish on the water trying to do it on your own let us help you get through it let us help you get the closing um one of the biggest things i've heard too from um people that haven't done non-qm is I, I don't think i can sell the rate I don't, the rates are so much higher than than qm well they're kind of narrowing the 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 gap between the rates on conventional and non-qm right now they're not high in my opinion but if you ask the client i haven't had anybody especially on the bank statement program give a big um rebuttal on the rate because it's i tell them go back to the borrower and say well you can show uncle sam all your income and give him 30 percent, or you can give me five percent on your interest rate i mean it, they're no-brainer loans if you know how to go into them and know how to handle them so again don't be scared they're super super easy and I will tell you, I have a lot of LOs that just want to do the non-QM because they're tired of getting haggled by that eighth of an rate or getting shopped by their borrowers that are going over here and, oh, well, this guy's gonna do it for, for this much closing costs. This is such a great program for you guys to be able to offer and you don't get all that competition going back and forth. So don't be scared, go into it with an open mind. And again, lean on us to help you. I guarantee you'll love doing them. Awesome. So good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Stacy, uh, I guess great minds think alike. She stole my thunder there of uh, <laughs> don't be afraid of the unknown. Um, I think that's probably the biggest fear most loan officers have is they don't know what's coming. And, you know, again, to, to you know, speak to the call just ask one of us you know you have uh, account executives with angel oak that you know we are all tenured we can you know walk you through each step uh, we have all the guides and um, uh, videos on our web portal for resources to help if you can't get in touch with us but um you know really i, I would also speak to this point is be actively involved in your first couple of files if you just dump this onto your processor and they're not experienced with doing these loans, you're probably not gonna have a very good experience. Um, when you take ownership of it, you're gonna do a majority of the work up front by taking the 1003, pulling credit and getting the bank statements anyway. That's, that's, that's a vast majority of what you're doing. So if you're doing that already, you might as well just see it through. It'll help you learn the programs, get the overall feel for the timing and what will be needed and it'll just make you more comfortable to sell these products and, and speak to people, um, you know, at, at, at will. Yeah, uh, that, that's awesome. And Stacy, I'd really like to kind of reiterate your, your comments and about, um, you know, you're adding a, you know, you're providing a solution to these borrowers. So they're not, <laughs> they've probably been told no by those lenders that do agency or do, you know, full doc prime jumbo kind of loans only. So, they're thrilled to get a loan and 
they're not going to leave that potential on the table and, and go out and try to find an eighth veteran rate. Whereas agency, they can go online and get 10 quotes in about 10 minutes. So that's, that's a big difference. And that's something that when you're that expert originating those loans, you're the one making that. So they're really good point. I'll, 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 thanks, Chris, as well. All right, uh, Carlos and Steve, you guys are, are back on the block. Um, what is a great use of non-prem that most people don't think of? Yeah, so um, I'll leave this one off. Um, I think that a lot of loan officers forget that when they're dealing with a a, a, a customer of theirs, a lot of times a lot, their customer is also, is a, of course, a buyer, but a lot of times they're a seller, you know? So going back to the same, same thing that we kind of all keep going back to with is value, value. We provide the value, just like we provide value to our loan officer and lender partners, you guys as a loan officer provides value to the realtor. And therefore, in return, you hopefully, you know, you'll get a lot of their business. So a lot of LOs forget that and the realtor kind of forgets and maybe some of them don't know, is that that these programs, especially this bank statement program for self-employed, it provides a big value to that realtor who, you know, we get calls all the time. I said, you know what, I want to get a listing. Um, I got the listing, but my seller is 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 also looking to buy. Um, went to their bank, got declined, can't buy, so therefore can't sell. You know, so I always go back to the whole like it's like a circle that we we kind of have to kind of play both sides of it. So I think that a lot of loan officers forget that. Um, we're dealing with a buyer who's also a seller and it's kind of like a domino effect. So if we go in there and we show the value to that realtor that, hey, before you take the listing with that, or you lose a listing worse, with that with that customer, with that seller of yours, give me a shot. Let me pre-qualify him or her as a buyer. Once I feel comfortable that we have an approval, I mean, like Tom said, we have a bona fide pre-approval from top to bottom. This isn't just us writing something on a sheet of paper saying, go ahead, you're good to go. You know, we got the experts on this panel that really know how to dissect the file. And when we give you an approval, man, that's your commission check. So you can take that to the bank and you can take that to your seller and the realtor and say, Mr. Smith, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, they're ready to list your property because you're ready to buy. So Mr. Mr. Realtor, go ahead and take the listing, put the house on the market. You got a buyer, which means you got a seller. And again, it's a, it's a matter of helping our loan officers realize that it's just more than just that buyer you know what i mean so and going back to what everybody said i, I keep going back to the, the reason why we're all here so that you guys know that we're here as partners we want to grow your business you got to lean on us we want you to see who's behind the phone calls or the phone and management and so you guys know that you're trusting us with your commission check with your relationships with your realtors with your friends and your family and we know that you know and we've been in your shoes or you know, so we know how what it takes to close a loan. And like Stacy said, lean on us. We'll get you home. So that's all I got. That's good. Steve, anything else to add? One, one let me add one thing to that. Uh, a, a lot of the, the LOs that I've spoken to, uh, newer ones that are entering industry, are thinking that non-QM is, is for borrowers that have bad credit or low FICO scores. Uh, and that's not necessarily the case today. A lot of what we do is for the professional, the doctors, the attorneys, the you know, whatever have you, that just simply need alternative lending. So non-QM doesn't mean low FICO scores or bad credit. Uh, I want to push and emphasize the, the alternative lending because a lot of my, my loans are the professional uh, borrower out there that just simply wants a bank statement loan or the, the, the hassle-free investor cash flow debt service loan. So go after these borrowers. Don't be afraid of them. And I think our, our average credit score, Tom, is what, something in the low 700s today? Well, it's funny. I was going to throw that out there, Steve. The, uh, Angel, we just did a securitization last week, and the average FICO in that $250 million securitization was 740. So exactly what you're saying it's it's not a it's not always a credit situation although we have products for that it's it's really just an alternative to agency and prime jumbo so great great point hey we've had a, a couple questions come in and i just thought it'd be a 
good time to, to, to even address a couple of them while we have a second. But one is uh, our, our turn times. What is our turn time from kind of from start to finish to get a, a loan closed? Uh, Bob, you want to you want to take that one if you're not on mute? Well, uh, 30 days is pretty easy for us, subject to a timely appraisal, a well-processed file, and a responsive borrower, which are the things we can't control. Our turn times are pretty solid. We let you know those up front. Yeah, and I thought a big one, someone has already mentioned that our pre-qual turn times and even our bank statement income calculation, those are, that's like 24 to 48 hours. So, you can, you know, a lot of the heavy, heavy lifting, lifting happens right out of the gate. So that happens early and it happens quickly. So we can, we can, you know, it is most importantly, or just as important as give you a quick no, if it's a loan that you really shouldn't be spending any more time on, we're, we're going to let you know that right up front. Um, Chris Taylor, have another question. One is, uh, do we allow appraisal transfers? Yes. Uh, we, we do allow um, appraisal transfers from an AMC and uh, you know, it has to be, we have to have a letter, of course, um, allowing us to use the appraisal. Yep. Very simple, but, but not a problem at all. Okay. Good stuff. We'll go back to uh, some of the questions that we have here. Um, this is Eric Morganson and Stacey Flanagan. What makes Angel Oak different? Stacey, you want to go first? Yeah, because I don't want to follow you. <laughs> oh. You're all <always> so good. <laughs> what makes us different, I would say, is us. It's the AEs. Um, it's the team that we have inside. It's our underwriting team. It's our staff. It's our, our family-oriented culture that we have here, um, leaning on each other if we need another help from somebody else or suggestion. But... I think the AEs here differentiate um, us from other lenders. Also, what we can do up front, again, you're, you're kind of hearing repetitiveness in our answers, but us calculating the bank statement income for you so you know your purchasing power um, on a bank statement loan because you don't know what, what it is with their tax returns or their tax returns are so low that they write so much off that you, you don't know how much they can qualify. So that adds a huge value and benefit to your realtor partners that we can give you the income up front on the bank statement programs. We're gonna calculate that and tell you your monthly income that you have to work with so that your realtors, your partners are going out and looking at the right, right correct price range home. So to me, that adds such a value. We're giving that value to you to pass it on to your clientele as well, which I think is huge. Um, the other part is just our knowledge. Using, uh, you might present a scenario to us one way, and when we look at it and talk it out, we might come up with saying, okay, well, this might be a better fit for the borrower. This might give them a better, higher LTV or better interest rate if we go this route. So we have that opportunity to be able to look at each loan as its own story. Nothing is black and white in the non-QM world. Everything is gray. Every loan has its own story. So tell us the story and let us to help you decide which is the best avenue, which is the best program to put your borrower in. Yep. Indeed. And as Stacy was saying, literally what sets Angel Hook apart, you folks, is great people, great companies. Good people, good companies. Uh, okay people, okay companies. Angel Oak's leadership is great. We have an unbelievable culture. And as Stacy says, lean on Angel Oak because we've been doing this a long time, eight years. We have 23 securitizations. That means we're the broker dealer. We're the ones putting these loans into a mortgage-backed security. So we get to make all of our own credit decisions. It's not that, hey, you need an exception. Well, okay, uh, I'm going to have to get back to you in four days. That doesn't happen here at Angelo. We make our own credit decisions. And as Stacy said, the guidelines at Angelo were so great because we simply just put on a, a pair of common sense goggles and we look at each loan based on what's the story on this. As Tom would say all the time, we really do story loans here. Uh, you cannot possibly equate putting 
all the loans that we do into guidelines because of all that is of the human element out there. It's so vast that, geez, we just take every loan based on its own merit. Um, Angel Oak, you guys, we have been at this a long, long time. You can't jump into this non-agency, non-QM space and hit it out of the park day one. It is, um, uh, it's a business that is full of common sense and we are doing large volume. I believe we are the largest securitor of non-QM loans in the nation. So again, your AEs here at Angelo folks, they're the best in the business. That's why Angelo. Yep, good stuff. Okay, so this this next one's changing gears a little bit. And Scott Grubel and Bob Hutchins are gonna help me with a little bit, but I wanted to talk about the changes that have been coming down the pike from the agencies. You know, FHA, FA came out, stations <clears throat> on uh, investment properties and second homes. And, you know, I think it's, it's kind of a, uh, philosophical change, if you will, and I've, you know, I've heard a lot of people kind of agreeing with this thought process, is that the, the agencies, their mandate was never to give the best rates to a, an investor or give the best rates to somebody who wants to buy a beach, beach house. You know, their mandates have really been to expand home ownership across the United States. And just over the years, as things evolve, maybe they've kind of gotten out of that mission a little bit. So the FHA has really made it obvious what they're going to start doing. I've heard somebody mention, you know, go to non-QM for, for a cash out loan. I mean, I'm thinking that maybe cash outs might be next on the list. But, but this is why it's really important as an originator to understand non-QM because um, as agency keeps shrinking, that means more loans are going to fall outside that box. And that's where non-QM co comes in. So. Maybe Scott, Bob, you guys have anything else to to kind of expand on that because you know that this is kind of a new happening. It's been happening over the last 30, 60 days, and uh, there's more to come. You're on mute, Scott. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah, you got it. All right, we're we're seeing this uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm sure my colleagues will agree already. Um, Patients on the FHFA loan volume cap uh, for investment properties and second homes as, as a lender letting in the private sector. Um, so a lot of these loans that you're starting to see investment property second homes that are being limited either by volume caps or simply by the shrinking of credit in DU and LP are now loans that the only option left is non-QM. Um, so we have numerous products and programs that can help you both on, on both sides, Invest um, investor cash flow is our debt service ratio program for investors. There's no income verification, employment verification. We also offer a, a no debt service program as well under the investor cash flow program. So as, as credit is shrinking, you're going to see a lot of loans that would have received an approval, DU or LP, maybe a year ago, are no longer getting that approval. Um, and, and those loans, you now have an option to face with non-QM because we offer all of those products. And programs. I think, you know, we talk about for a loan officer differentiating yourself, um, how many LOs out there are going to try to run that loan through one of the AUSs and maybe not get an approval and let that loan walk out the door. If you differentiate yourself by partnering with Angel Oak, a non-QM lender that can offer different places to place that loan and get that loan done, you look like the hero at the end of the day. So um, yeah, I think you know we, we, we see a lot of opportunity. And like I said, on a day-to-day -day basis, I've seen a big uptick in my volume coming in the door on investment property and second home. Yeah, yeah. and I'll add to that. Uh... Uh, you know, so we have these constricting guidelines, and I'll use myself as, as an example. In December, I refinanced at 2.75, 30-year fix. I'm done. You know, I'm off the market for five years, 10 years, maybe forever. So you got the constricting guidelines. You got a shrinking refinance base. What a great time to position yourself as a, a specialist working with self-employed borrowers. 
hey, Mr. Borrower, you're, you qualify for a million dollar loan, but I'll, I'll tell you what, send me your last 12 months of bank statements. And then you call them back, hey, you're eligible for a $3 million loan. You're happy, the realtor's happy, I'm certainly happy. Uh, position yourself as a specialist working with investors. Uh, there's an obvious shift to private equity right now and a great time to get involved in non-QM. Yeah, that's, that's probably uh, the difference really uh, in Angel Oak is that, and, and I kind of want to move to that and Jill and Chris Taylor are going to help on this, but like the vertical integration that, that we've mentioned already today, how does that how does that impact or have an effect uh, to a loan officer? Well, I, I would just say that we ultimately are the decision maker. We don't have to go to anyone else for a decision. And it's really powerful because we, I mean, us as AEs, we, we all obviously get feedback on what program should be. We forward that up to management and, and ultimately our capital markets group, and we create our own products uh, based on feedback that we receive. So when we have to make a decision or we have to get a, an exception, we can do that internally without, without having to go to anyone else. Angelo drives that, uh, that ship basically. Um, I would say a good 15 to 20% of all my loans I have to go to management for approval for an exception of some kind or um, you know, guidance on a loan because self-employed borrowers, everything is so different. It's so unique. And uh, we, we're very good at navigating those waters. Yep, absolutely. Jill, anything else you'd like to add? No, Chris pretty much nailed the entire model of <laughs> vertical integration there. But yeah, we're our own credit manager, lender, and investors. There's no third party reviews. There's no external person that gets involved slowing us down. A lot of the big banks, I know they definitely have to send it up to other powers and that definitely can be a three to sometimes two week wait. And we don't have that here at Angel Oak. Um, we originate the loan, sell the loan to our asset management team, and then they prepare for the securitization for our investment side. Yeah, I uh, one, one of my favorite phrases, I, I know everybody on this is on the panel has heard this before, but we really connect Main Street to Wall Street. We we are we are in all facets of it. So you know we're feeding information back to the investor, to our asset management side. They're feeding back to us what the investors like, and and that helps us continue to kind of improve the products and programs, pricing all along. It's just it's uh that's what vertical integration means. And and really the other piece that I think it means to a loan officer is that. Um, we, we are kind of self-sufficient. We're not really, it doesn't matter if, if certain companies, Wall Street investors get in or get out, we're in, we're in as an, as an entire entity. So when we offer a product and you guys are really kind of honing in and I agree so much with, with the credit piece, when we say we can do a loan, we're going to do it. And we're gonna do it at those terms that, you, that we told you, because a lot of times we've heard the stories they get an approval at X you know, rate and X loan to value. And then all of a sudden, right before closing, the deal changes. And so it puts a loan officer in a really bad spot to have to go back to a borrower, go back to a real estate agent and say, oh, you know, I told you we could get you an 85%, but now we can only do it as, as a 75. And, and then it's a scramble. And then, you know, honestly, if I'm an originator, I don't, I don't want to do a non-QM loan if that's how it works, but that's not how it works at Angel Oak. So I think that's just really really a critical piece um okay good deal thank you thank you jill thank you chris um mo moving on starting to see a bunch of questions that are around products and programs so i would like to take a couple minutes just to to touch on those um seeing quite a few investor cash flow uh questions so bob what what do you like about the icf product and program and maybe walk some people through the process so they have, have a, a better understanding of it. Yes, these are very simple loans. Uh, these real estate investors like the simplicity of this low documentation investor cash flow loan. You know, you've all talked to an underwriter before where they said, I've got this full doc loan, he owns 25 properties, this is going to take me all, all day. The tax returns are 200 pages. Well, here we just need, uh, uh, we're, we're looking at the cash flow of the subject property only. Um, so these are simple loans, they're fast, limited documentation. Uh, the investors love the simplicity and speed of this. 
there's many things we can do on this program, vesting in an LLC, interest only options, uh, unlimited finance properties allowed, uh, up to a three month recent forbearance allowed. We even allow negative cash flow up to 75 LTV. Above 75, up to 80, we would require that positive cash flow based on the market rent. So go out there, there's just millions of investment properties out there. Go find those, replace the hard money loans with the 30 year fixed rate in the fours, fours or fives, uh, with no points to the lender. Uh, they're gonna love you. Find those right. investors that own the free and clear properties. Maybe they wanna cash out and go buy more property. I get that scenario every day. So just a, a very excellent product to have in your toolbox. So literally, Bob, I was just reading a question here. It said, if the appraiser says the income for the investment property is $2,000 a month and the PITI is less than $2,000 a month, do we have a deal? That's the question I'm reading right here. Could you answer that? Well, what you have there is positive cash flow. These are structured like a commercial type loan. It's just based on the market rent figure. So in that situation, you have positive cash flow. They're eligible up to 80% LTV. If the, if the cash flow is negative, we can still do the loan. It's an extra quarter to rate for no DSCR required, up to 75 LTV. There are very few things we require on this loan. The one is that they must currently own a primary residence. We don't offer this program to renters. They could then easily move into the property after doing no income verification. There are exceptions to that, like a 1031 exchange where it has to be an investment property, um, but there's really not much required to get these loans done. There's no investment experience required either. Hey, Bob, I, I think you mentioned it, but I got a question about it as well is, can, can these be done in an LLC? Vesting in an LLC is, is absolutely allowed. The individual must be on the note. Perfect, okay. Good stuff. Anybody else on the panel want to throw anything else about investor cash flow that we might have missed? Well, today rental income, it's at its all time. Hi. So you have a perfect storm for this program. Great point, Eric. Great point. Okay. Um, Chris Frugio, tell me about the bank statement loan. What uh, you know, we've we've heard a lot of mention about it, but kind of like what are your favorite parts about it. Um, I've gotten a question, what's the minimum loan amount on a bank statement loan? Um, and then also maybe get a, a little more clarity on the, the income calculation. We've had a few people mention it, but gotten another question of, of if we could spell that out a little bit more detail. Definitely. So um, first things first, minimum loan amount 150. Um, and uh, Carlos Betancourt will take all your $150,000 bank statement loans. <laughs> so, but uh, honestly, our, our average bank statement loan, or mine at least, is 500000 Average LTV is 80%. Just to give you an idea of what, at least here in Arizona, what I typically see for a bank statement loan. Um, in regards to what makes the program so popular, I would probably say what, what I hear the most is our process. Um, brokers can get their 1003, their credit, the bank statements, send it to us, and within 24 to 48 hours, they're gonna get you know, underwriter approved income, and we're gonna be able to map out that loan, or you know, how we can proceed from there, or you know, what steps are gonna to have to be taken to, to get them you know, eligible for the loan. You know, not everyone's always ready at that point in time, but at least you can get them a plan. Um, it's, you can go right to our website. It's, you don't need credentials for this step. Um, you go right to Quick Quote, and I think we're gonna do a, a a demo of this after so um, you'll go to our home page you'll click on quick quote you'll price out your loan you need eight data points then you'll be able to upload that information send it to your AE uh, they'll you know confirm that they've got the documentation um, that you're in for review and then when the review is back again we have the hardest part of the transaction down the income now all we need is you know assets appraisal and title and nothing ever goes wrong with those so you know, you're pretty much halfway home or, or just about all the way home once you have that, that income dialed in. Another thing um, that, that separates us, we have a default 50% business expense ratio. Most businesses are going to qualify for 50. There's a couple others 
that you know have higher or have higher inventory, you know, a car dealership, a restaurant, something with with again high inventory. And again, your account executives will will be able to inform you of that when they see it on your 1003. That's what we're here for to help differentiate between you know what's 50, what's you know what's 70. Uh, you can potentially also get a lower expense ratio if you can get a CPA pro tax preparer um, letter stating that the expense ratio is lower than 50 percent. So we can help people with, you know, uh, stay, you know, at home businesses or, uh, you know, places with small, you know, consultants, you know, something like that, that, that don't have a lot of inventory or overhead and um, have lower margins. So you can help, you know, a wide um, swap of people that from your home based business to, you know, your major car dealerships or, or restaurants in the area. No, uh, no tax returns are needed. No 4506 T. We don't want to know anything about your tax returns. Uh, we're just looking at your bank statements um, and the cash flow from there. And uh, we allow purchase, cash out, um, rate and term refis. We do delayed financing with six months. A lot of people have had to pay cash recently for homes. Um, you know, if they want to get their money back, we can help them uh, get them back. And that's with all of our programs, not just the bank statement program. Uh, we do 12 or 24 months. You get a better rate with 24 months of bank statements. Um, it's only slightly, it just depends what your tolerance for paperwork is. We do first time home buyers, up to 90% LTV for our bank statement programs. Um, a lot of our competitors don't do that. So that's something that separates us from, from the others. You can use co borrower W 2 income alongside with your self employed um, uh, borrower income. So a lot of, you know, some places don't allow that. We do. Um, two years from a bankruptcy. Uh, or short sale that was recently updated from four. So all some things just make it easier to do business with us and, and our banks and the programs. Yep. All right, on the panel, anybody, anything that Chris, not that he missed, but something we should uh, focus in on that is important on these bank statement loans. We had quite a few questions that were coming through, but I think we've answered most of them. Uh, I do. We allow the borrower to go into forbearance for up to six months and they don't have to get caught up on the payments they missed. They just need to be current for at least three payments before we fund the loan. But we allow forbearance on bank statement loans. Yep. That, and that, if, that's if a good I, one. If I can add, Tom, um, and Chris touched on it a little bit, is is the process. So I think with the bank statement program, we all know it's our most popular program, but with the bank statement program, for those that have never done one before, there can be this misconception that it's more difficult. And, you know, we, we touched on it earlier. I like to say it's actually easier than a full doc loan for a loan officer. And the reason I think it's easier is, you know, we obviously do agency loans as well, the UNLP loans. So we have experience with both. The only difference between a bank statement loan and, and an agency loan is you're replacing your tax returns for a set of bank statements. But on the bank statement program, the account executive, when we do the pre-qualification, we're calculating that income and that buying power for you up front. Before that loan is submitted to underwriting, you have an income approval, which is huge. Nobody else does that. So you can send your buyers out shopping with an income pre-approval in hand, and they know exactly what their buying power is. So now when that loan gets submitted, the income's already completed. In my opinion, it's easier than a full doc loan. Couldn't agree more. Uh, and certainly if you're working with a self-employed borrower and going full doc, it's really, you don't get an answer until that underwriter has gone through the whole loan, right? And that's, that's way deep into the process. So you hate to see a loan go bad at that, that point. Okay. Uh, hey, Gigi, just yes. kind of wrap up here on products, but could you just touch on our, you know, we've talked a lot about the investor cash flow and the bank statement, but what about platinum and our portfolio select products? So what do you like most about those? So what I like about the platinum and the portfolio select, that's basically our non-QM full doc product is we go 90% to $2 million. There's no MI on these products. We go 80% to $3 million. Um, our minimum loan amount on the Platinum is $250,000. On the Portfolio Select, we're at $125,000. The difference between the two products that, of course, I really like is our foreclosure and bankruptcy seasoning, which is 48 months on our Platinum 
and it's 12 months for foreclosure on our portfolio select and 24 months for any bankruptcy. Um, also, both Fulldock products have a one-year tax return option, which I get a lot of requests for, so that really helps. The portfolio select also allows a one times 30 in the last 12 months on a mortgage, and also allows the forbearance up to six months. So I really like that. I also like the six months reserves. Cash out can be used for reserves on both products. Awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, based on the things that happened in COVID-19 last year, I think uh, the, the portfolio select especially, there were a lot of people even still today, you know, credit issues, credit challenges, and they're going to be digging themselves out and then want, want to become a homeowner or need to do something with their current residence. So these products are there. Uh, we talked earlier about it's not just credit impaired people, but we certainly have products for those that have had credit challenges. Um, and, and the Portfolio Select and Platinum are those. So good deal. All right, so I'm changing gears again. Uh, and Carlos, I'm gonna ask you, you, you're not aware of this, but um, I'm just gonna ask if you wouldn't mind helping us, I wanted to show everybody our website and, and see, can you guys see that? Can you see the website right now? Yep. Okay. Why can't I see it? Yep. <laughs> um, we can see it good. What? Uh... Okay. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, Carlos, just walk walk me through. Uh, you know, I'd say for those, that, especially that have, aren't familiar with doing business with with Angel Oak, um, walk away with AngelOakMS.com because that that we have so many resources right here on this page. I think that's really important. So, um, let's just Let's click click through this and let me show uh, show some people what we can do. First and foremost, why don't we start? What do you think with the non q the quick quote? Since yeah, we'll let's start. Absolutely, show them our partners how we can get uh, quote them a rate. So we go to the website. I think Scott said it earlier. Uh, maybe Stacy, you don't need any credentials here. You can go ahead yep. and log yep. into the website. Um, I always like to say a couple of things. This is for you guys and, and us as well. Mm -hmm. Try not to always quote from here directly because a lot of things can change the program uh, you may have a comp different compensation in your company so always check with us first um, call us we'd love to go through this with you and first before you go to a customer because once you quote a rate if it changes for some reason you're in trouble so uh, Tom let's do a yeah. let's do a, yeah. a nice little bank statement scenario here um, okay. okay so let's go with uh, what is that eight uh, 825, 825,000 loan amount. Yep. Uh, we'll do a typical kind of FICO in the 760 range, loan to value. Why don't we just start at 75? That's about where our average is. And all you yep. have to change is what? Income? Just give me the income type. Yep. Yep. All right. So we'll we'll do business, 24 month business. And as soon as you've entered those three pieces of data, it pops up for you. So there you go. There you go. That's a 3.875. Pretty aggressive. Yeah. So three, three and seven eighths. It also tells you like we asked for a 75, but for this borrower, we could go up to a 90%. So, you know, you're talking an $850,000 loan and, and getting that done at 90%. Uh, that's, that's quite aggressive. What's, what's the maximum loan on the bank statement loans? 3 million. 3, 3 million total. So uh, really aggressive on the, the above 80%, but even below that up to $3 million loan amounts. And we can, make exceptions uh if needed so and no mi don't forget yeah no mi after this you would just you'd click select and then that's that's where you go to the piece that we were just talking about you upload the 1003 the credit report and then the 12 or 24 months bank statements and that gets sent directly to the account executive and and at that point we're off to the races tom one thing that i that, I, that eric was mentioning and, and and jill one thing that we get a lot of inquiries is great customer just had an issue the last 12 months with uh, with their mortgage. Can we do a one times 30? Even sometimes I've done a, a, a one times 30 or two times 30 or one times 60 within the last 12 months on a bank statement or on a full doc loan. The answer is yes. Could that be on a jumbo? Yes. Could it be on a cash out refi? Yes. So kind of like we said, these are story loans. Uh, something happened, an issue with the bank, issue with the health, whatever, life. I, I call it life. You know, what happened? Life happened. So right. you had an issue, you know, your credit is good, but why why are we going to go ahead and punish you on one little issue that just happened recently when you've been, you know, your customer is a great customer. 
we were here to make sure that we take a common sense approach to still get you that loan, even though you've ran it through four different lenders and they all turned you down because of that one times 30 uh, in the last 12. So we can do that for you. Right. Yep. Good stuff. The other thing that I would just say on our website, I, I won't, we're, we're kind of getting low on time. So I would like to wrap it up here in a couple minutes, but um, one of the questions that we got is, is non QM a good product to market on social media? And I, I just, you know, once you become an approved uh, lender with us, you have access to all these flyers that that are not that say nothing about Angel Oak on them. In fact, you put your logo and your name and your contact information. You can just take these flyers, save them, and put them up on social media. And we see, and Carlos, you can probably speak to it. I mean, there's loan officers there that are they're out there promoting themselves all the time. Maybe is that self-employed loan originator expert and so they take our bank statement flyers and our investor cash flow flyers they put their information on them and they're putting them out on social media on a regular basis so they built their own brand by using the tools and the resources they give them and we also tom one thing i always tell all my loan officers uh you know scott does a great job of this i know eric we will go to presentations for you uh with you when you do, if you obviously do it face to face, if you want to do Zoom like this to your realtors, to your your referral partners, we go there with you as your partner. We're not, we don't come in as Angel Oak. We're not saying call Carlos, call Scott, call Stacy. You know, we're your partner. We're from ABC Mortgage. We're here to provide another value a piece to you and your programs, and let them know that you're the expert in that field. So use us, use the flyers, but use us just as well. That's why we're here. Don't forget, we are. I think we're your biggest asset. To this whole to this whole your success here is us so reach out to us don't forget yep okay uh anything else on the website anybody on the panel something we we could show them all right i think we're good hey listen i appreciate we've got a lot of questions that have just come through uh not going to be able to answer those right now but we will keep them if you didn't already get an answer we will get those to your account executive and that account executive will get back to you. Uh, thanks very much for the panel. Y'all did a great job. Obviously, while you're top producers, lots of knowledge, not only on this panel, but within Angel Oak and, and our entire sales force. So thanks very much for joining us. Uh, we look forward to uh, helping you grow your business in 2021 and beyond. Thanks everybody. Have a great day. Bye, thank you. Thank you.